Yo, what's going on guys, and welcome back to another video, and today, I'll be doing what if Naruto had hacks. So, there's not much of a backstory to this, however, I am going to say that his parents still did die, because, well, I mean, nothing really changed, you know what I mean? So, everything goes as normal. For the first, I don't know, two years since Naruto's birth, right? He's not bullied just yet. I mean, he's basically still a baby. But then, slowly, he discovers that he's different from other kids his age. He was able to walk about a few months, like two or three months after his birth, which is very unusual for children. For babies, I'd say. He was able to talk very quickly and understand things that others couldn't. He learned reading and writing very quickly before the age of 40. And he even wanted to become a ninja very, very early on. But people still despised him. They saw him as the Nine Tails. By the way, yes, he does still have the Nine Tails sealed in him. His Again, the backstory is just as the normal canon goes. So, we skip to about when he's six years old. Hiruzen celebrated his birthday with him, and they went out of the village into the forest and watched the scars. Naruto told Hiruzen that he wanted to become ninja, but Hiruzen didn't really acknowledge it since Naruto is just a bratty kid in, in his eyes. But he knew that something was up. So he asked, why do you want to become ninja? And all Naruto said is because I want to be the strongest. Haha, <laughs> Hiruzen laughed it off. But he imagined that Naruto could become a very powerful ninja someday. So he told him to train until he could go to the academy. And there, the real challenges began. So he did. He trained every day, did push ups, meditated, and much more. He even watched some shinobi train each other and fight, and even tried to go along with Anbu. Though, of course, they saw him and told him to go home. One day, whilst doing some push-ups, Naruto went on for so long, he did about a hundred push-ups, and then passed out from exhaustion. From exhaustion, sorry. Because he pushed himself too much. But then woke up in Kurama's den. The floor wet, full of water. Sky nowhere to be seen. And in front of him was a huge nine-tailed fox behind bars. And the reason he met Kurama this early in the story is because Naruto was already at this point stronger than Academy Naruto. By the way, this was, of course, before the Academy. He was still training as normal. And... Naruto didn't know who Kurama was, but he still approached him with open arms, you could say. Not really open arms, of course, but he did wonder who Kurama was. And so, he asked him, what's your name? Kurama didn't want to respond since he doesn't like giving, especially humans, his name. He just responded with the nine-tailed fox. He told the backstory of how he invaded the village, not about the part of being controlled though, because he wanted to be seen as the big bad monster for Naruto to be scared and someday maybe break down so Kurama would be able to control his body, because Kurama doesn't like humans. Naruto seemed very saddened at the fact that this monster just told him that he 
purposely killed his parents. Though he didn't really buy it, at least he didn't want to buy it. He told Kurama that there's no way he would just want to kill people. Kurama explained that a lot of people, a lot of shinobi, have the lust to kill, and then included the nine-tailed beasts, which are similar to him. Naruto still didn't appreciate that answer, and wanted to know why Kurama really killed people. And then Kurama told the truth, or, as le or at least as much of the truth as he knew. He said Madara Uchiha told him to do it, and had him under a genjutsu. Because that's all he knew. He didn't know that it was Tobi at the time, of course. And they seemed to get along. At least that's what Naruto thought. Though Kurama still didn't want to trust him. After that, Naruto woke up back at his house as if it was just a dream and that day never happened. Kurama went on to influence Naruto's thoughts into even more eager to become the strongest and want to become a ninja since he thought it'd be nice if his vessel was a very powerful shinobi so that he didn't have to go through his Jinchuriki dying again since it wasn't a very pleasant experience for Kurama. However, Kurama didn't actually talk to Naruto anymore. Well, at least until the academy came around. This was about at the time where Naruto was actually pretty strong. I mean, of course not really strong. I mean, he's still about a 10 year old, but for his age, he's very powerful. Some would even compare him to Sasuke, the prodigy, at least amongst the children. But not to someone like Itachi. Tachi had incredible powers, and showed them from a very young age. Naruto then, when the time came around, went to the academy with all the people we know, like Sasuke, Sakura, Shikamaru, Shoji, and of course, all the others. Yuruka was there as well, and of course, the events with Mizuki telling Naruto to steal the scroll, of course, still happened because he saw Naruto as just one desperate kid trying to become stronger so he can prove to the village that he's not the Nine Tails. Of course, he told Naruto about the Nine Tails, so he already knew it. He already knew it, so he didn't really mind. He only stole the scroll so he could see incredible jutsus for himself and didn't really care about what Mizuki said. Iruka, of course, came in to try and protect Naruto and then was shot with shuriken. Well, thrown at, I guess you could say. However, in this story, Naruto was fast enough to actually catch the shuriken midair before they were already, before they were ready and already, you know, hitting Izuka, sorry, not Izuka, Iruka, and, you know, fatally wounded him. In this story, Naruto from the scroll was able to see, of course, the Shadow Clone Jutsu, was able to try it once or twice, and he also saw the Rasengan, though he wasn't able to practice it, he just saw it in the scroll. And then the whole battle fight came around. Iruka was shocked at Naruto's speed, and then tried to apprehend Mizuki, though he quickly ran away, attempting to get the scroll, but Naruto held on to it with his dear life. Iruka then went after him and told Naruto to stay put, 
so he didn't listen, and he actually went in front of Ruka. Though I'm going to say, at least for now, Naruto isn't quite as strong as Iruka that right now. He's just very attentive and Iruka wasn't looking at the fact that he was being thrown, kunai and shirk. Anyways, Naruto runs as quickly as he can and actually practices the jutsu, sh shadow clone jutsu, on the way and actually succeeds and makes one or two shadow clones, which he tells to scout the area, search for other hostile ninjas. He finally finds Mizuki resting beside a tree, and tries to get him from multiple angles and the shadow clones surrounded him, though he already noticed. So. Naruto quickly went and tried to blitz him, though Mizuki saw it, pushed him to the ground, and almost tried to kill him. Well, he tried to, but he wasn't able to. Iruka quickly came and saved him. At least that's what he thought. Of course, Kurama would have intervened if Naruto would have seriously gotten hurt, but nobody knew that at the time, not even Naruto. Iruka proceeded to fight Mizuki, though that didn't go as planned, and he was actually on the verge of losing. Then Naruto stepped in again, and almost chopped off Mizuki's arm. That left him wounded and on the verge of bleeding out. Though he didn't want Mizuki to die, since that would make his reputation even worse, so he quickly took him, snatched him, you could say, and ran him to the hospital where he was fixed up, though of course with chains, so he wouldn't run away or kill anyone. Hiruzen the third Okage was of course told about this incident, and all the other students Sorry, not the students, although the teachers were informed as well. They now saw Naruto as more than just a student. A very... A student with a very high potential to become a very powerful ninja. Possibly an Anbu with his quick speed. Or maybe even the next Hokage with his levels of skill. Who knows? Naruto proceeded to train and train vigorously. He didn't really mind what people thought of him, though it would be nice if they didn't hate him at least. One day, Kurama talked to him once more, and here, Kurama told him a secret about another scroll even more powerful than the scroll that Mizuki wanted to steal. This was the legendary scroll of the Otsutsuki. Now, of course, nobody knew who the Otsutsuki were, and Kurama only knew it because of Hagoromo. But these scrolls were legendary. They would put you at a godlike level, even stronger than Kaguya. So Naruto went out to ha to look for them, but Kurama then told him that scrolls might not even be on Earth. Nobody knew where they were. The whole Otsutsuki race almost had to sacrifice them just to keep it a secret. But Kurama had a hunch that it was near the hidden leaf, somewhere underground perhaps. So they looked and looked, sometimes Naruto would even let Kurama take over his body, or ask for extra chakra so he could have his shadow clones look for it. And of course that would go much faster. It took him a few weeks, but one day he found a cave 
It collapsed under his feet and he fell down about 10 meters. He was completely in the dark. I mean, literally. He searched and searched for a few hours and then found a place with a few torture, torches. It looked like a small shrine. And there it was. The legendary scroll. It had golden edges, and it didn't look like a regular piece of paper. It had an ominous aura, and Norto knew that there was something special about it. So he looked at it, took it in his hands, flipped it around, and wanted to read it. But he then saw that it was just a blank piece of paper. And when he wanted to put it down again, the paper completely vanished. Since this was a different kind of scroll. Kind of scroll where when you read it or even touch it, you absorb its power and its abilities. Meaning now Naruto has unlocked all of those. Well. He hasn't really unlocked them since he doesn't even know about them, but he has the potential of them. Kurama doesn't know either of all of the abilities, of course. For him, this is just a rumor. But it, soon it would prove that this is much more than just a rumor. One day when Naruto was going amongst the streets, few drunk men threw glasses at him, but before one hit his head, which he couldn't dodge, the glass suddenly stopped midair, and so did the people. It seemed as if time literally stopped, though Naruto could think, and after a few seconds, even move his body. However, he was the only one. It seemed as if, as if he could literally move through time. So he walked around for a few minutes. Well, the time was still stopped, so technically it was an instant, I guess. Kurama couldn't talk to him either since he was even stopped in time. Naruto was really the only one that could move around and even think about it, since for everyone else, it seemed like an instant. So when time continued, once again, instead of being hit by glasses on the streets, he suddenly disappeared for all the viewers. Well, and with the viewers, of course, I mean, the people standing around him. And Hiruzen, the third Okage, suddenly saw him in his office. Naruto, how did you get here, and how did I not notice that you came here so quickly? A uh, long story. Um, could I become a shinobi? <laughs> I already told you, Naruto. You still have to finish the academy to become a real shinobi. And only then can you become a genin. And then, yeah, 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 Naruto said. Then I have to rank up. La, la, la. I already know, but I'm powerful enough. I can become the next Hokage, he said. Which kind of reminded Hiruzen of Minato. Since Naruto's father was a Hokage after all. Naruto actually knew that, though he reason didn't know that Naruto knew that. Because Kurama told him. So, for now, he doesn't tell anyone about these powers. Because Kurama told him that it might bring attention to them. And even people from outside the village might try to get those powers for themselves. Such as petty thieves, even. Because... He's just a regular kid. At least that's what most people think. Then we move on to the Genin exams. 
where he tries to be in the exact middle of everyone in the score. So he wants to succeed, of course he wants to pass the test, but he doesn't want to outshine everybody else, but he also doesn't want to fail. So he tries to be in the exact middle of all the contestants and he actually succeeds. So he doesn't get any more attention than he needs to, but he still passes, which is nice. As a sensei, he gets Kuronai, which he's not too happy about since he, since he has found an interest in Sasuke, and Sasuke is not on his team, Sasuke is in, of course, Kakashi's team. So he wants to change teams, so he proposes to Kakashi and to Hiruzen, third Kage, for Kakashi to have Sasuke, Sakura, and Naruto in his team instead of the current Sasuke, Sakura, and Shino because those three are some of the strongest genin there are, especially Sasuke and Shino and they're supposed to be one of the stronger genin teams so they can handle more difficult missions earlier on such as C-tier missions before everybody else and this is only after like one week of the Genin teams being accepted. Everybody getting their team. So it's so they haven't gotten any hard missions yet. They still only have done D ranked missions. It gets approved, but only if Naruto fights Shino in a one on one battle. Of course, a friendly match, nothing like to the death or anything. But Naruto needs to prove that he can be useful in a team and can hold his own against a very strong genin such as Shino so they know that if they do put him on Kakashi's team they're not losing on strength this fight is pretty easy for Naruto he easily wins though he doesn't try too hard just yet of course, he has a lot of physical power, which he uses to his advantage. He does use the Shadokan Jutsu. None of, none, none of his crazy hacks just yet, since he doesn't actually need them for someone so weak. He does use a little bit of Kurama's power. Not something crazy like the Cloak, but to get more Chakra for 10 Shadow Clones, which is very useful for him. Of course, he doesn't yet have anything crazy like the Rosengan, but with some kicks, punches, dodges, and basic shuriken and kunai throwing, he does outmatch Shino. So Naruto introduces himself to the new Team 7, which is Sakura, Sasuke, Naruto, and of course, Kakashi. This isn't really in the new Team 7. This is the one we all know and love, but new for them. Of course, we got the basic introductions. Sakura does her thing about loving Sasuke. Sasuke, of course, wanting revenge on his brother for his family. Kakashi doesn't say anything important, but Naruto doesn't say the usual. He says that he's found an interest in Sasuke and wants to become the strongest shinobi there is. And Kashi, Kakashi is just thinking that everybody else on his team is now obsessed with Sasuke, which he does not like at all. He wants his shinobi students to be independent and not always whining over Sasuke, since he did feel a kind of darkness in Sasuke. But he's gonna have to see. Of course, now they get a harder missions after a few weeks pass by, which is the Land of Waves arc. This doesn't surprise any of them, since they are the strongest getting team, at least that they know of. The arc goes pretty normally. They, of course, succeed at the mission, actually easier than before. Naruto doesn't actually get hit by the kunai at the beginning of the mission whilst going to the to the village 
because he doesn't get hit by surprise from the demon twins, I think they're called, or the demon brothers. He does learn Shree walking from Kakashi much, much faster than he did before, and actually succeeds before Sasuke, which makes him extremely mad. Now he is eager himself to beat Naruto at anything possible. And whenever, whenever there's something Kakashi wants him to do, Sasuke tries his best, which could actually be beneficial for both of them, since that'll make both of them faster learners and stronger shinobi, which could be good. Kakashi's also liking this, and Sakura, of course, she's just being left behind. She's, of course, obsessed with Sasuke. Now once her first C-ranked mission is over, the pre-tuning exams start. What I mean with that is the exams don't yet actually start, but they get to know some people and they do feel the tension, because there is a lot. They do have the Gara interaction, but Naruto in this time, in this case, in this timeline, isn't intimidated by them. He's searching for a rival, similar to Sasuke. They're both very intrigued by Gara, but Naruto's still kind of angry for messing with Konohamaru. Kurama tells him that Gara is the Jinchuriki of the One Tails. One of the weakest tail beasts, but also one that wants to rival Kurama. Naruto kind of gets the idea that Gara's tail beast is a brat, but <laughs> Kurama laughs it off, as he kind of thinks the same thing. Now, the first exam starts. It's the written exam, of course. Kurama helps and gives some of the answers to Naruto, although he can just cheat easily since he's not as stupid as in the original series. And he has some... well, he has some aces up his sleeve. Team 7 and the usual teams easily pass this exam without much hassle, since Sakura and Sasuke, especially Sasuke, has much more trust in Naruto in, than in the actual normal series. The second exam starts and they're introduced to the Forest of Death. Here Naruto doesn't actually have that, I'm gonna say weird interaction with Anko, and with that, the exam starts. Naruto actually didn't quite understand what Anko meant, so he thought that all three Genin in the team, per team, have to get three scrolls, so three full sets of Heaven and Earth scrolls. So as, he, as soon as they got into the forest, Naruto immediately shot out ten Shadow Clones including himself, and went to run off to get some scrolls. Of course, he gets some very easily, since he's very fast with Kurama's chakra, of course, and his physical training. And they're only second to Gaara's team, so they actually managed to beat it very, very quickly, and even pass on the first day. However, whilst Naruto was gone, Sasuke actually got the curse mark from Orochimaru. And whilst Naruto has a feeling that there is a way to remove it, he can't just yet do it. With that, the preliminary rounds start. Normal fights happen. Of course, Sasuke and Sakura get their normal fights. Everybody else does as well because seven teams passed from the second exam, which was much more than they expected, so they had to thin out the crowd. And now, of course, we went to Naruto's fight, and Naruto is fighting Kiba and Akamaru, and makes some clones, however, Kiba is quite fast, and Akamaru 
is helping out quite a lot. Kamaru tries to trick Naruto, where he transforms into Kiba, but that doesn't work, since with Kurama's help, of course, you can easily tell who is the real one. And he does the comeback, where he tricks Kiba into thinking that, well, Akamaru is hurt. And then he wins the round. Pretty usual, just some slight changes. Nothing special though. All the other fights go as normal, and they have a month to practice for the final third exam of the Chunin exams. They get their normal opponents, and it's gonna be Naruto against Neji. And Sasuke, of course, against Gara and all the other ones. Naruto isn't sure who he wants to trade with. Kakashi is obviously wanting to train with Sasuke. Sasuke does too, since he wants to learn the Chidori, which he has seen a few times. Then, whilst going along the streets, he sees an old man talking to some shoes. He asks who he is, and Jiraiya, which we know him as, says that Naruto should just go away since he's just a little kid. But Naruto persists and asks him for his name, that's all. And after he says, I'm Jiraiya, he leaves again. The next day, he comes back to Jiraiya and wants to ask him if he's a strong shinobi. And he replies that he's extremely strong, actually one of the strongest. He's kind of bragging at this point. He says perhaps he's even on par with Hiruzen, his sensei. Naruto is a little bit shocked that Thurukage is his sensei. Though he has heard that Hiruzen, of course, had his own Genin team from Hiruzen himself. Naruto asks if he can be trained, and Jiraiya agrees, but only if Naruto can show that he is actually worthy. So with that, he shows Jiraiya how to, that, not how to, but that he can walk on water, walk on trees, does some Shadow Clone Jutsus to try to impress him. Jirai has seen enough and accepts Naruto as his new student. They go off on their normal journey, of course. Naruto is then going to train. His training is much easier than it was before. Well, before, I mean, in the actual series. Because Naruto has a little bit of a brain, and he has somewhat befriended Kurama already. So controlling Kurama's chakra is much easier, and Jiraiya is actually blown away at the amount of chakra that Naruto can set free. Naruto has, on his own, been practicing the Rasengan ever since he saw it in the scroll of ceiling. Jiraiya was unaware of this, but thought Naruto wasn't ready yet to learn it, similar to the normal events in the series. One day, whilst training, he had an idea, and that was to let his clones, his shadow clones, train with him. Since he noticed that everything his clones do and train, Naruto benefits of. Also, it would be nice practice to keep that many shadow clones going for as long as he can, for endurance training. Naruto, Naruto kept doing this until one day he passed out from exhaustion once again. Though this time, instead of seeing the nine-tailed fox in front of him, he saw very old people with extremely pale skin and eyes similar to the Hyuga. These were the Otsutsuki elders, a generation long forgotten, who had put their combined efforts into making the scroll's secrets which Naruto absorbed. They didn't speak to him, and after a minute of silence passed, 
he woke up in his normal surroundings once again, though he noticed birds in the sky stuck in place, as if time had suddenly stopped once more. Though this time it felt as if Naruto had some control over this power. He walked through the village and saw everyone frozen in time. However, instead of trying to go back to normal, he used this time freeze, as he would later call it, to train. This would allow him even more extra training. He went on to train for one extra week in the matter of an instant for everybody else. After that, he used all of his remaining training period of two weeks before the final exam to practice this time manipulation power. We now see all contestants ready for the final exam in the arena of Konoha. Naruto is confident he can win, since he had much more training than everybody else. Sasuke still came late though, of course, whilst training with Kakashi, so the first match was Naruto vs Neji. This fight seemed interesting, though most people thought Neji, the prodigy of the Hyuga clan, would still win. They both got ready to fight, went into their fighting positions, though as soon as the proctor of the match told them to begin the fight, Naruto made time go slower. Not quite stopped it since he couldn't do that at will yet, but he could make time go slower which allowed him to be about twice as fast as he usually would. This allowed him to immediately get a big advantage over Neji. Neji, however, knowing some of Naruto's might, directly went into 64 palms technique and was therefore able to defend all hits from Naruto. Naruto made some shadow clones and all of them started preparing a Rasengan. But since Neji didn't know this jutsu, he thought he could defend it like a normal punch, but as soon as one of the Rasengan hit Neji, he fell to the ground, with barely any fighting power left. All of the experienced shinobi in the crowd, including the Hokage, Jiraiya, and Orochimaru, were surprised at this attack. Neji, after being asked if he wants to give up, denied and was dealt the final blow. With that, to everyone's surprise, Naruto won the fight. Very very quickly. After this, the normal, regular old battles went on. Of course, the other Konoha 11 fought, so did the San Shinobi, until it was time for Sasuke vs. Gar. The beginning of the match went pretty normal, nothing really had changed. However, Sasuke was a little bit stronger since he had more motivation. To get stronger because not only did he want revenge on Itachi in this time but he also wanted to surpass Naruto. Not really surpass but at least keep up since he did see and know that Naruto became extremely powerful very very quickly. Now at this point whilst Naruto was in the stands all of Uchimaru's underlings released the gas that would put everybody except for the more experienced shinobi to sleep, and the Konoha siege began. At this point, all of Orochimaru's underlings went on to start fighting the remaining shinobi and started to destroy the village. Also, the big serpent that Orochimaru called started to destroy the outer wall of Konoha. Naruto wasn't, of course, affected by the gas, though everyone, including him, was very surprised. Naruto immediately made as many shadow clones as he could, and started to freeze time as much as possible, since before, after his own fight, he reverted back to normal for everyone else. Naruto did his best to fight as many and occupy as many shinobi of the enemy as possible. He kept eyes on Orochimaru as well as Kabuto. Hiruzen was currently engaging in combat with Orochimaru, and Naruto wanted to head there since he foresaw that Hiruzen was gonna be in trouble due to his old age. Naruto, now after being pushed emotionally, 
was able to stop time as much to make him five times faster than everybody else going through time, of course. This allowed him, as well as Kurama, to get ideas before all the fights escalated too quickly. Since Naruto was now able to make Kurama with him faster in time, more or slower, however you want to see it. They had an idea to try to break the seal that the 4th Hokage and Orochimaru, sorry, 3rd Hokage and Orochimaru were fighting in. Though that seemed extremely difficult since not even Hijonin and Anbu were able to do that. Though Naruto still tried, Kurama gave Naruto his one tailed chakra cloak, which gave him an extreme boost in chakra. Naruto poured all of his possible reserves into this one jutsu and was able to put a small crack in the cube formed seal that allowed Naruto to get into the fight as well as the other Anbu followed him right through. No time to ask questions. They all immediately went to the Hokage to help him. Orochimaru was now much outnumbered. And with that, Orochimaru was bound to be defeated. Which made him want to retreat, though he knew that if he retreated now, he wouldn't really be seen as a big enemy if a Genin, possibly a future Chunin, could easily break his seal. Though of course he knew that, or at least he thought, that it was just the Ninetales helping him. And the Ninetales did all the work, though that was not completely true. Orichimaru called back his four strongest subordinates, and then tried to flee. All the other shinobi did not know that Archimaru was fleeing, so they continued to fight, and most of them were apprehended, which was a huge blow to Archimaru's army of shinobi that he either kidnapped or drew to his side. Sasuke now, of course, was following Gara with the help of Sakura and some of Naruto's clones. Here, Naruto was much bigger help than he was before and didn't have to use Gamakichi, sorry, Gamabuta as the thing he called to help him, since Naruto was enough help as well as the other Shadow Monk. He froze time as much as possible and used as many Rasengan as needed to defeat Gara and in this timeline, he wasn't defeated. It wasn't a draw. This time, Gara was completely outmatched with Sasuke, Sakura, and Naruto's Shadow Clones going at him at once. Tamari tried to help, though she knew that even she, if Gara couldn't do anything, she could neither. So they retreated as well. However, Naruto did tell them that they weren't enemies. They could be friends. With that, the Konoha siege ended. And whilst it was still a big blow to Konoha and some people did die, it wasn't nearly as bad as in the original series. However, Hiruzen still wanted to search for Tsunade for help since he realized in that fight that he alone would not be able to protect the Hidden Leaf Village anymore due to his old age, and he wanted to name Tsunade the new Hokage, the fifth Hokage, and was Naruto and Jiraiya's job to get her, since he realized that Naruto was extremely powerful. And they would actually put him as a Chunin rank, as well as Sasuke and some of the other Ganyan that helped defeating the enemies. While going on their mission, Jiraiya asked Naruto as many questions as came to his mind about Naruto's newfound power. 
his ability to use the Rasengan which shocked him most, as well as his incredible control over the Nine Tails Chakra. Naruto explained as much as he was willing to, though he didn't explain the scroll part since Kurama told him to keep it a secret, even from his own sensei. They then found Tsunade, and Tsunade this time was a little more willing to go back to the Hidden Leaf Village, though since she noticed that Hiruzen, the third Okage, was still there, there was, she didn't think there was a need for a new Hokage, though after them telling her that Hiruzen wanted to step down once more, she reluctantly agreed after their little matchup for with Naruto showing Tsunade her strength from their bet. Cause Naruto actually did lie that he didn't know their Asengan to get her back and she, he wanted to show her his resolve. And it was actually Jiraiya's idea combined with Naruto because Jiraiya knew that that would remind Jir Tsunade of their old friends and comrades who died long ago. This time though, Urchimaru didn't comfort Tsunade since he knew that Naruto and Jiraiya were going to be there. And also, this time, Urchimaru didn't actually lose his arms because Hiruzen didn't offer his own body and soul to the Shinigami. So you could actually say that Orichimaru got better cards than in the original series. Though the third Okage is still there and the Konoha and the Hidden Leaf Konoha Village is still intact. So both parties came off pretty good if I'm going to be honest. Probably the best events that could have happened. And Sanare came along to the village. She was then announced the fifth Okage, and everyone seemed to be happy, though extra training would be done for the Genin and the Academy students, as well as all other shinobi, since they realized that there were still big threats to all villages. Because before, there had been a long period of peace after the fourth ninja war. Basically ever since Naruto was born, and even before that, which had now been about 13 years I believe, or 14. So before this Konoha siege, nobody really realized the threats that were still out there, but now everybody was willing to give it their all. With Hiruzen still alive and Konoha intact, they have a much better chance against the Akatsuki, or at least that's what they thought. Orochimaru's underlings, after a while, try to abduct Sasuke, or take him, however you want to say it. Sasuke reluctantly agrees, like in the normal events. Of course, the Kona team is ordered to go after Sasuke, though they have a hard time, and Naruto and Sasuke are finally in the valley where all went to shambles. Naruto and Sasuke are opposing each other. However, Naruto will beat Sasuke here easily. Not crazy easily, but he will beat him easier than Sasuke beat Naruto in the original series. He has better control over Kurama. He can slow down time for himself. Better chakra control more Jusus in his arsenal, he's just stronger. Naruto beats Sasuke and takes him back to Konoha, and with that, the two year time skip begins. Naruto trained a lot over this time period and got more hacks. Well, he didn't really learn or got them, he just unlocked them by achieving more control over his body as well as doing some meditation and talking more and more to Kurama and building a closer relationship with his inner self. He also got much more chakra, not just chakra control, but also unlocked more chakra 
as his body evolved into a teen slash young adult, as well as Kurama being to give him his all as much as Naruto needs. Sasuke got stronger too, but not quite as much as Naruto, of course. He trained a lot with Kakashi and basically got all of Kakashi's abilities and even trained a little bit with Naruto. So he definitely got very powerful, even more powerful than in the original canon. And now, of course, Gara became the Kazekage, just as normal, but then got kidnapped by Deidra and Sasser. Normal Team 7 is, seen, is sent out, this meaning instead of Sai, we have the normal Sasuke, Sakura, Naruto, with Kakashi as their team sensei. This time, they succeed with relative ease. Sasori, of course, still kills himself and tells Sakura the important information. Though in this battle, Naruto was much easier at defeating Deidara. Since in the canon, they thought they defeated him, but he still survived. But here, they did actually defeat Deidara, and he did not survive. Sasuke, of course, helped out much more than Sai did in the canon, so it was very easy for Team 7. With Deidara, sorry, with San, San, with Sasori's tip, Team 7 follows to the bridge, where they meet up with Orochimaru in disguise. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention is that Kakashi wasn't on mission in this team in the, at this point, so Yamato wasn't the team leader. It was just Kakashi. Also, Sai secretly followed Team 7 under Danza's or orders without them actually knowing. Well, they didn't realize someone was following them, but they didn't know exactly who and why. Now, back to the present. They meet Arachimaru on the bridge where Sasori told them to go. Naruto isn't angered so easily by Arachimaru talking this time because Sasuke didn't leave Konoha, of course. Arachimaru has a deep hatred for Naruto though, but also a lust for his body and wants to control him. Similar to how she wanted Sasuke. But even more since not only does he have the nine tails, but there's something weird about him. He has so much chakra, yet so much self-control. And just raw power. Alright, Archimaru tries to kidnap Sasuke once more, which makes Naruto extremely angry. But instead of losing control like in canon, he consciously uses five tails of his chakra cloak to absolutely demolish Orochimaru. He retreats, and of course Kabuto goes with him. Naruto gets back Sasuke, so there's everything okay, and Team 7 returns back to Konoha. Team of Chunin and Jonin, in the meantime, were sent out to stop Hidan and Kakuzu of the Akatsuki, who were killing people left, right, and center. Here, the normal events take place. Asuma dies, Shikamaru is traumatized by these events. In the meantime, Naruto doesn't need the training with Kakashi to learn the Rasen Shuri since he has some form of mastery over all five elements and didn't just learn the Shadow Clone Jutsu trick to train faster, so he has all of that already done and trained for years. And I say years in plural, not just two years, but because of his time freeze ability, he had about 20, which is a lot, especially with that many Shadow Clones. Now Team 7, along with the remaining Team 10, which is, of course, Ino, Shikasho, 
go to kill Hidan and Kakuzu, like in the normal events. They succeed as normal, but with less difficulty, much less, since Naruto basically solos Kakuzu with a bit of help from Kakashi, and Sasuke and Shikamaru finish off Hidan. But Shikamaru does get his revenge, of course, and Sasuke does let him do that, since he knows how it feels from Itachi. Though, of course, Sasuke isn't there just yet. This, kind, this time, Sasuke doesn't go follow Itachi mindlessly because of his hatred. Because his hatred has gotten much less. However, Naruto and Sasuke do request a mission from Tsunade to go catch Itachi and kill him if must be. Tsunade denies, thinking Naruto and Sasuke alone aren't strong enough to go, and Sasuke is not mentally prepared enough. However, they sneak off alone to search for Itachi. Sasuke, of course, has his reasons. Not only is Itachi a criminal, he's his brother who murdered his family and clan. And Naruto understands that and wants to help his friend as much as possible. And as I said, Itachi is a criminal, because they don't know the true backstory of what happened that day, so they just think of Itachi as a bad person, which of course we all know he's not. Sasuke is a little bit stronger than in canon, as I said before, but Tsunade doesn't think they're as strong as Itachi. Naruto and Sasuke track down Itachi and Kisame, but Kisame only lets Sasuke go fight Itachi. So Naruto waits outside until Kisame seems to become impatient and starts to fight Naruto. And I'm sorry to say, Naruto wins low difficulty. At this point, he's mastered his time freeze ability, and it's as if Naruto moves at the speed of light, where everything else stops for him except for himself. So, he's basically impossible to defeat at this point. But yeah, Kisame was no match for Naruto, which is a big blow. To the Akatsuki. Not only have it Sasori, Deidara, Kidan, and Kakuzu died now, but also Kisame and Sumitachi. And of course, Orochimaru is just scared of Naruto at this point. Naruto goes after Sasuke and Itachi, who are now battling at the fullest. Sasuke didn't go to Orochimaru, the completed Naruto's training boot camp, as I'm gonna call it, and got all of Kakashi's abilities, so he's pretty damn strong. Naruto watches their fight because this is Sasuke's fight, and he respects his feelings. However, when they're at their final attack and Itachi takes his last breath, Naruto again completely freezes time and takes some of Itachi's and you'll see why later. Naruto then retreats without taking Sasuke with him, for he saw that it was destined to leave Sasuke there. Sasuke faints as usual after this fight, and Obito abducts Sasuke and tells him the truth. Sasuke is furious, completely angry, though he doesn't want to destroy the leaf this time, he wants to protect it like Itachi did, because he's made a very close connection with the leaf and the people in it, especially with Naruto, Kakashi, and some others. And yes, of course, with Sakura as well. At this point, Naruto doesn't quite go back to the leaf yet, but he kind of stays around the village where Sasuke and Obito are now at. In the meantime, without their notice, Jiraiya went on a mission, though Tsunade wasn't very happy with it. He knew that something was going on in the village hidden in the rain, and this is where the pain arc begins. Normal events happen, and sadly, our beloved Jiraiya takes his end. At this point, Sasuke kind of escapes Obito, 
goes with Naruto back to the Hidden Leaf Village. Jiraiya's frog, the old one, the Grandpa Toad, as I call him, goes back to the Hidden Leaf Village and gives notice of Jiraiya's passing as well as his message. Naruto is completely depressed at this news, and while Sasuke does try to help him deal and recover from this, from these crazy emotions, he is unable to help him completely, and knows that Naruto must take a revenge, similar to how he did, though Sasuke didn't want him to go the same path as he did, for he now realized that it was the wrong path, and he was just blinded by his emotion. Naruto though trains and trains even more, and finally agrees to go with the Toad to learn Sage Mode, and let Shikamaru deal with the hidden message. Naruto learns Sage Mode much quicker than usual, and instead of making like three shadow clones at Mount Miyaboku, he makes like 300. Who all tank sage energy. So once Naruto goes back to the Leaf Village, which is now almost completely destroyed by pain. He's now ready, more ready than ever, to absolutely annihilate the Akatsuki forever. Pain sees more in Naruto than in canon. He's a beast at this point. Incredible amounts of chakra, crazy jutsus, incredible chakra control, sage mode stronger than even Hashirama's, and so much energy stored up, it would destroy the world. They start fighting, and Naruto beats Five of the pains with incredible ease. He finally fights the last one, which has all of the pains energy now. This is a harder fight, but he still destroys them. Then, after going to Nagato, he talks to him, similar to the canon. And whilst he is furious, he does want something from Nagato. Not only does he want Nagato to revive all of the remaining dead people from the village, he also wants his eyes. Nagato, of course, on his own, wants to revive everybody from the village. And then, with Naruto's request, agrees to give him his eyes, the Rinnegan and is then buried by Conan at the same place where Jiraiya was and they also made a grave for their friend. With that, Naruto has the Rinnegan save the village and everybody seems to be happy. Conan actually lives in the village now and she's welcomed by most people and she even talks to a lot of Jonin, Chunin, and Tsunade herself. Though some people still have a lot of hatred for her, since she was part of the reason that Konoha was destroyed and a lot of people were killed, although they did get restored back to life. At this point, Naruto also has an idea to help not only the village, but also his best friend, Sasuke. And that is to use the hair that he stole from Itachi right before he died, and use a secret jutsu, a forbidden jutsu. Naruto uses the reanimation jutsu to bring Itachi back to life. He lets Itachi and Nart and Sasuke, sorry, have some time to talk it out, and after about a day, he asks Itachi if he can help restore the village and protect it from future battles. And Itachi agrees, 
because with Naruto's chakra, he can he basically gave Itachi a part of his chakra. So whilst Itachi's chakra signature is now similar to Naruto's and has a faint feeling of Naruto, Itachi can now live out his life until about 20 years into the future, which is quite a long time, especially for an already dead person. Naruto then, with his newfound Renegon, goes to the Akatsuki hideout. Obito is of course now preparing for all-out war, because most of the Akatsuki have already been defeated, except for very few. Only Zetsu, Obito, and Orochimaru are still alive. Though Orochimaru doesn't really want anything to do with the Akatsuki anymore, and was actually contacted by the Leaf to team up with them instead of the opponent, which he reluctantly agreed, though only because Naruto was on their side, and if Naruto and Sasuke switched teams, he would have changed his mind since they will carry this war. Naruto, with incredible chakra, and now the Rinnegan, as well as Sasuke with the Mangekyo Sharingan and other crazy abilities. By the way, Naruto, sorry, Sasuke does actually now have the Eternal from Itachi, which Obito actually gave him. Which is pretty stupid, too stupid of Obito if you ask me. But you know. Anyways, Naruto along with Sasuke does go to the Akatsuki now and confronts them. Obito opens him with open arms, but not really. Well, if Naruto joins, he said they'll make his dreams come true. Though Naruto didn't buy it and directly went into combat. He absolutely destroyed Zetsu since he doesn't really have any fighting power. He's really just a spy. Obito was no match for such an incredible shinobi, so he did die in the end. And Archimaru, well, he's part of the Konoha as well, so... With that, the Akatsuki are basically dead, though Black Zetsu is still alive, which they don't really know what he's planning yet because he still has a chance of doing the infinite Tsukuyomi now with Naruto as his main person with two Renegons that could be the way to revive Kaguya though as soon as he goes to Naruto to try to get him to his side and manipulate him Naruto copies his dark signature, his chakra signature, looks for it around the entire globe, make sure that he's the only one, and then defeats him easily since he doesn't really have any fighting power. And he checks again after that to see if any trace of him is still left, and he guarantees there is no which now means all the Akatsuki members have been defeated. Sasuke got one Renegon. Just kidding, he didn't. <laughs> Sasuke just has two Eternal Mangekyos. Naruto has two Renegons. Incredible chakra. Incredible powers. The Hidden Leaf is safe. Everybody survived except for Jiraiya, of course. There was never a fourth Shinobi war. And this is how the story ends. Naruto, shortly after that, became Hokage due to his ripeness as well as power. And with that, the village was safe for many years to come. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little series. And there will be much more to come. See ya.